Thank you so much, everybody, for coming here to Gilmore today to be in the beautiful heartland of Gilmore in the town of Maria. Um, it's fantastic to have been pre-selected for the Nationals to run as the endorsed candidate for the federal election coming up for the seat of Gilmore. I'm so thrilled to have Michael McCormick, our Deputy Prime Minister, here to officially kick off the campaign. Thank you, Michael, for being here. And, you know, I, I'm really excited about being the Nationals candidate for this seat. I've got 20 years of experience in Parliament. I've got experience as a Cabinet Minister. I owned my own small business for many years, so I've got great retail experience and small business experience. I want to see tax breaks for small business. I want the Coalition to win this election. I am worried about Bill Shorten and Labor uh, getting their hands on government in Australia. I don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see higher taxes. So it's absolutely fantastic to be here to fight Labor and to be here for the Coalition, for the Nationals in particular, in the seat of Gilmore today. Well, if Katrina's excited, I'm doubly excited. I am so, so pleased that my great friend, a friend for longer than just her political career, I've known Katrina Hodgkinson for many, many years, and she is a fighter, and I am absolutely thrilled and delighted that she's putting a hand up for the seat of Gilmore, for the Nationals. The Nationals need Katrina Hodgkinson in Canberra, fighting for rural and regional people, fighting for those people in Gilmore who need better services, who need better health, who need better education and who certainly don't need the retirees tax. I need Katrina Hodgkinson and every other National Party candidate who are running for rural and regional Australia. They're running for the people outside the margins. They're running for the people outside the metropolitan areas who need better services, who need better infrastructure. There's no greater fighter than Katrina Hodgkinson. I've followed her career closely. As a newspaper editor at Wagga Wagga, uh, when she was a local member uh, representing in my readership area, I've seen her as, as, the, uh, as a National Party backbencher, and I've seen how hard she fights as Minister for Small Business, as Minister for Primary Industries in the New South Wales Parliament, and certainly as the National Party leader, as the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, I've also seen how much she cares about regional Australia. She's been the Vice uh, Chairman of the New South Wales National, of the, of the National Party federally. Uh, that's the sort of person I want, somebody who, for whom the National Party runs in their veins, somebody for whom uh, after her state career had ended, she still wanted to give back and now she wants to give even more back by running for this federal seat. And I know that the people of Gilmore will be well served by Katrina Hodgkinson. She's got experience. She's got a wonderful, wonderful family. Uh, Jack, uh, her husband, uh, Georgia, Hamilton. Uh, she's been a small business person. She understands agriculture. She understands just how important it is for the uh, seat of Gilmore, indeed for regional areas, to be represented by National Party people. And, uh, and I'm just delighted that she's put a hand up uh, when she told me, when she phoned me uh, some time ago that she was considering a tilt at the federal seat. Uh, you can't believe how excited I was. You can't believe how thrilled I was at that news. And uh, I need fighters like Katrina Hodgkinson in my team, fighting hard for the people of Gilmore, fighting hard for rural and regional Australians. I know that if uh, the people of Gilmore give her their vote uh, this, this election, uh, whenever that might be, probably may, but who knows, but whenever uh, that is, uh, the people of Gilmore will not be disappointed. They will have in Katrina Hodgkinson somebody who is such a fighter, somebody for whom uh, rural and regional Australia is a passion, somebody for whom is going to be an advocate, as I say, for better infrastructure. She's already uh, been campaigning to me for more funds for the Princess Highway. She's been already talking to me about uh, the needs and wants and expectations and indeed demands of the people of Gilmore. And we're here at Maruya, we're here at the airport where, you know, quite a significant development has gone on. And I'm looking forward, and no doubt, uh, uh, no doubt Yirrabadala Shire Council is too, to the Rex planes landing again next week on the redeveloped airport. We're not far from a $2.3 million federal contribution to a new hatcheries for, for the fishing industry. And of course, Katrina, as a former primary industries minister in New South Wales, understands the importance of fisheries, understands the importance of aquaculture and agriculture. So in Katrina, the people of Gilmore have a fighter. I know that the National Party are right behind her, uh, and I'm sure the people of Gilmore will be too. Uh, what do you hope to achieve? Uh, what are your policies? Well, what I'm hoping to do is be the best and most effective representative for Gilmore. In the meantime, during this election campaign, now that I've been officially pre-selected, I'm conducting a listening tour. I am getting around to meet as many people as I possibly can 
Just this week, I've attended a meth forum. Now, ice is a major problem in the local area, and ice residue in rental properties, for example, is an emerging issue. It's something that's quite new on the scene, but it's something that needs to be looked at. Uh, disability employment services is something that I'm very passionate about, and getting the NDIS right for the people of Gilmore is, a, is an absolute priority. The Prince's Highway, in so many places, remains a death trap, and I want to see a lot more Commonwealth involvement with that. The Commonwealth uh, contributed, of course, heavily to the Pacific Highway in the north of the state, also to the New England Highway. I want to see a much greater contribution to the Prince's Highway uh, so that we can help to ameliorate the death trap that much of the Prince's Highway currently is. Uh, I want to see uh, better aged care services. I want, to I want to be able to help those in need. Um, um, defence personnel are very significant and important for the local area. Uh, there are so many areas. Uh, mental health is a passion of mine. You know, I've got um, experience in mental health issues in my own immediate family. I want to help those that need help. Uh, and Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, these are both passions of mine as well. So I want to bring my 20 years of parliamentary experience here into Gilmore and work at very much a local level to help all of those areas, to help people in need, to help uh, people up if they, if they happen to be down. So I'll be bringing all that experience with me, uh, hopefully uh, if I am elected as the member for Gilmore. ICE, of course, has been on the street now for quite some time, and uh, as a former state MP, it was something that I was involved with for conducting for around the electorate, around um, different towns, to make sure that people understood the gravity of actually taking ICE, but also to help parents and carers identify if somebody in their family was taking it and how to respond. So it's an education, uh, it's as much about education, I think, um, as preventative, uh, needing to take, undertake preventative measures. Uh, we are still in the learning space, I think, with this relatively new type of, of drug that's so heavily on the streets, particularly in the regions. All the anecdotal evidence is that it is a, a, of greater use in the regions than it even is in the metropolitan areas. So very significant for us and something that I really want to get in there and help to crack. It's going to take an entire community to help to crack this. But we all have to be really vigilant about it. Um, I, I, I really uh, condemn the use of drugs, particularly illicit drugs. They're so dangerous. But you can't just stand there and tell people not to take them. They have to be educated. Uh, so I'm very passionate about that. You said you wanted to look into mental health services yep. and improving them in, in regions like the southeast. Uh, we've yep. had thousands of dollars go into uh, headspace in our region. Do you see yourself investing in stuff like that or, or, or further work? Well, I believe that we need additional headspace facilities, particularly in the areas such as Batemans Bay. Um, there are, headspace is a wonderful service, but we need to see it rolled out through many more regional areas, many more country towns. So often young people in particular feel isolated. There is a lack of public transport. There are a lack of things to do in country towns. I grew up in Yass. I know what it's like. It is not easy. Um, people are naturally driven to sometimes do the wrong thing. That may involve drugs. You know, that may involve depression. Um, and depression is a very significant issue in the regions. Uh, I've lost a loved one to depression. Uh, and it's very tough on the family and the people that are left behind. That happens all too commonly in regional New South Wales. And uh, additional to that, you know, it's not just mental health and depression. While that's significant, other, other really important issues, uh, Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's, uh, are still mysteries to us. I want to make sure that we have the research funding available to really help those people who develop these highly debilitating um, illnesses. So that's a personal passion of mine, and I want to continue that fight to help those people in need. What about residential mental health facilities? Um, there's zero from the bay to the border. Mm. If you, um, would you step in and fight for this? Look, um, there is a real paucity of residential mental health care in New South Wales, in Australia. Uh, we could, uh, you know, if one in four people has some sort of a, a, a mental illness or a mind problem, where are our facilities for those people? Where's the respite for the people that have to care for those? 
Yes, obviously, it's, as I've just mentioned, it is a passion of mine and I want to see a lot more facilities established. But of course, you have to have the recurrent funding for that and the personnel to be able to look after those people who come into those facilities. So it is a big, big project. It's a big idea uh, and it's one that we will continue to need to work towards. Are you going to be based in the electorate? Uh, look, I have a place already in the electorate and I have a small farm just over the boundary as well. So we've been uh, concentrated here for a long time. And uh, I, this is one of the most amazing parts of Australia. I'm sure that everybody here would agree. It is so beautiful. Uh, it is absolutely a delight to have been pre-selected for the seat of Gilmore, and I couldn't be happier to be nominated to, to stand for the Nationals here. Is there a risk voters will see you as another parachuted in candidate? Well, I would certainly, uh, I don't see how they could say that. Um, yes, I was born in Yass, and I grew up in a small country town. Uh, my first election was in Southern Highlands, and then we saw redistributions which um, headed me further west. But it's, it's great to be back here with my family and to have my family's 100% support. Does the Coalition think it's an advantage for you to run against the Liberal candidate? Oh, look, I'm not going to comment about, about other candidates. I'm very much focused on the people of Gilmore on making sure that I get the issues right and that I can be the best possible representative that I can be. Look, there's no doubt that there have been concerns on the ground, but my focus is squarely on representing the Nationals. That's been my goal over the last eight to ten weeks. Uh, it's been a very, very thorough and exhaustive pre-selection process. Certainly no parachuting in the National Party. And um, I, I couldn't be happier to be here and in this situation with the Deputy Prime Minister to make this really important announcement today. Uh, one more thing, this man standing next to you, will you make his life hell to say 80 20 um, funding deal for the Princess Highway? I have been lobbying the Deputy Prime Minister already on this issue and I look forward to continuing to do so on a daily basis if I need to, Deputy Prime Minister, <laughs> to make sure that the level of Commonwealth funding is there. Um, the Princess Highway has not only seen too many lives taken from it, but also too many injuries, and quite often the people who end up with those injuries and their families are the forgotten ones. We need to make sure that we have got safe passage from the Victorian border to Sydney, straight up the Prince's Highway. I would ideally like to see a dual, dual freeway situation from uh, right, right through the length of the road. Um, we've seen, uh, we've seen some, some repairs on the road. There's been some, there's been some excellent work uh, done by uh, Andrew Constance, Shelley Hancock, Gareth Ward, but too much of it has been Band-Aid work uh, where there is a, uh, the, the capacity to make it a straight road, a dual freeway, you know, that is where it should be. So many heavy vehicles passing through our country towns. It is dangerous for our communities. Well, the fact is when incumbents retire, as uh, Anne Sud Marlis is, uh, the opportunity arises for uh, the other coalition partner to run a candidate. I ran a uh, three-cornered contest in the Riverina in 2010 and uh, the importance is that uh, we keep Labor and the Greens out of government. We keep Labor and the Greens away from the Treasury coffers. We keep uh, uh, Bill Shorten and uh, Chris Bowen away from retirees and their hard-earned savings. Uh, what we want to make sure is that we get uh, a Nationals Party candidate. That's certainly for me. Uh, my focus and my priority is to get the National Party in with as many seats and as many representatives as we possibly can. And to that end, I'm, oh, that's why I'm delighted that uh, Katrina has put her hand up. I'm also delighted that Perrin Davey has put her hand up for our Senate spot. Uh, we've got some outstanding uh, candidates and some outstanding women candidates, female candidates, uh, running in this election. And I want each and every one of them to be elected to Parliament so it makes my job easier. But uh, it doesn't just make my job easier, it makes the lives and lots of uh, people who live in rural and regional Australia easy. Because when you've got a fighter like Katrina Hodgkinson in the parliament, you know that rural and regional Australia will be very, very well represented. And Gilmore can be assured that this lady beside me, this wonderful, outstanding, experienced person who has got uh, so, such a, a great CV, such high calibre candidate, uh, you can guarantee the people of Gilmore can be assured that they're going to have a fighter and a campaign, whether it's the Princess Highway, whether it's a better mental health services, uh, whether it's for more infrastructure for Gilmore, uh, they're going to have someone who's going to champion those, those efforts. Why is it taken until now to endorse the candidate? Well, because we don't parachute candidates in and you've got to go through the full process and the National Party uh, has this uh, long and exhaustive process. Even for me, and I'm the, I'm the leader of the party, I'm, I'm the Deputy Prime Minister, I still have to go through the, uh, the full 
uh, you know, the full documentation, fill it all out, make sure that uh, everything is as it should be. And, uh, and the National Party always does that with every possible candidate. And, uh, and that's, that's the way we do it. Uh, that's the proper way to do it. We, uh, we get people who have their passion and their heart in rural and regional Australia, and we run them in the best seats that, uh, you know, that they, they feel they can represent. Uh, Katrina Hodgkinson, she knows this area. She's got a heart in this area. She wants to uh, further represent rural and regional New South Wales through the federal parliament. And you know, I commend her for doing that. It takes a bit of courage to put your hand up for parliament. And, uh, and it takes a big effort for somebody uh, who's got rural and regional Australia at heart to put their hand up and say, I want to represent my community. I want better services for my community. And uh, no one's going to stop me from doing that. Uh, this is Katrina Hodgkinson writ large. Do you think the Liberal Party's failure to follow through office in that way will affect votes to the Conservatives in general? Oh, well, look, that's a matter for the Liberal Party. I'm not uh, worried about too much about uh, what the Liberal Party are saying or doing in Gilmore. I just want uh, Katrina Hodgkinson to be elected. Uh, indeed, I, I, I want Bill Shorten kept out of, uh, kept out of the, the, the lodge. Uh, there's, there's no question. I do not want that person in the lodge. And, uh, and Australia has a, a great mistrust of Bill Shorten. They've got a great mistrust of Chris Bowen, particularly retirees. You don't have to go too far uh, down the south coast or indeed anywhere throughout Gilmore to understand that because there are so many retirees whose savings are going to be raided. If, uh, if Bill Shorten ever becomes Prime Minister. So, you know, certainly I want the best uh, coalition person to represent uh, coalition seats. I think the best coalition person for Gilmore is Katrina Hodgkinson. What's the Nuts stance on MPs using taxpayer funded electoral allowance, allowances to pay for TV and radio ads? Well, look, that's, that's been passed by, uh, that's been passed. It's, I mean, the fact is, in the past, we've been able to do uh, uh, mail ads, we've been able to do electorate brochures. The fact is we are living in the 21st century and uh, so many people are now no longer looking at the printed version uh, of these sorts of things and they, they get their news, they get their information, they get their data uh, via their phones, via their iPads, via their televisions and via their radios and so uh, uh, that's just a natural progression. Uh, you know, the fact is uh, we need to get our messages out there. We can't, you know, urge and encourage people to vote one, uh, you know, insert name of candidate here. But what we can do is uh, tell people what the government is doing, uh, what our policies are, how we want to build, build a better regional and rural New South Wales, how we want to build a better rural and regional Australia. And that's what I use my uh, electoral uh, allowance as far as uh, communications for. Uh, I do it in a responsible way. I know, uh, and I'm sure that uh, all members use it in a, in a responsible way, including, dare I say, those who aren't in the coalition. What's your stance on the national on national MPs removing party branding from their websites? Well, look, that's a matter for them. I'm proud to, uh, as you can see behind me, I've got the National Party banner, green and gold. What better colours? I, I love the National Party. I've been a member for many, many years. I love the fact that our, our members fight for rural and regional Australia. And whether they've got the green and gold with the, uh, the Nationals uh, branding behind us or whether we've got uh, green and gold, the uh, fact is we're representing rural and regional Australia. Uh, so. Uh, you know, that's, that's our main focus, uh, where our heart is in the country uh, and country people. That's what we do every day of the week, every waking minute of every day. I know Katrina Hodgkinson over the next three months, indeed, uh, for many, many years uh, into the future. I know she'll be fighting hard for the people of Gilmore. That's my focus. Uh, let's not worry too much about branding and, and that sort of thing. The uh, fact is I'm, I'm quite proud to stand in front of the, uh, the National Party branding, but if others don't, they just want to have a, a, green, a, a greenish sort of banner with a country soon behind it, well, that's... that's that's a matter for them. We've been going for 100 years. We've, we've, we've been proudly representing the interests of rural and regional Australians, and we'll be going on doing that too. The naysayers have been trying to write us off for decades, but you know what? We're still there. We're still delivering. And if you are talking about the New South Wales government, well, look at the 48 MPSs right up to uh, regional hospitals that, uh, that the Nationals have helped build throughout New South Wales. And look at the delivery that the Nationals have helped uh, to, to bring about uh, whilst we've been in the federal government. I know as a small business minister, uh, I, I helped bring about the lowest tax rate for small business for, well, since 1940, for 78 years at the time, so 2018. You know, that doesn't come by chance. It becomes because you're in a strong partnership with a strong partner, i.e. the Liberal Party, but you, you're in there representing the interests of rural and regional Australians, and you're in there fighting hard. I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, the instant asset write-off has been extended to 25000 doesn't, dollars doesn't happen by chance. The fact that we've got strong borders does not happen by chance. It, becomes you, it, be, it is because you've got a government which is uh, meeting the needs and expectations of the people we serve.